I've always been a great lover of Haydn, and I think the seasons for me is one of his you know, greatest masterpieces. But I think it is always been a little bit of an unloved child. Um, I think people have often found it quite a difficult work. And I really quite shamelessly wanted to try and do my best to rehabilitate this masterpiece. One of the major problems, at least for the English-speaking world, is a lack of a good translation. And I decided to really go back to scratch and retranslate the whole piece. Um, perhaps a little bit of history is helpful here. The source upon which the Seasons is based is in fact an English, or to be correct, a Scottish source. So the original text is uh, English, or it is in English at any point. Um, and Franz Fieden, who was a wonderful music lover and a great patron of, of Haydn, uh, his English was probably even worse than my German, and I can tell you that is really quite bad. Um, and when he back translates, so he translates the English into German and then back translates it into English. And this is really why uh, we have so many problems, uh, particularly with uh, the creation, but even more so with the seasons. So I decided to retranslate the whole piece. Um, I've spent my entire life working in German music, um, you know, starting in the old days with Schutz um, and Wechner and Huntunder, so and Bach, of course. So I'm very familiar with the language. Um, I can rehearse in German. I can order a coffee in it, and I can translate it quite accurately uh, with a good dictionary and with a few friends who help me out when we're getting to a particularly obscure version of an 18th century word. Um, I wouldn't be able to translate from English into German. That would be completely beyond my capability. But one of the interesting things um, about translation is that I'm trying to produce an English text which works in 18th century English um, because I'm not prepared to write uh, modern words. So when the, uh, the final achieve it is the final glorious word uh, uh, to uh, paraphrase the creation. Um, I send the libretto, as a libretto, uh, off to one of my great friends, Ruth Smith, who's the great doyen of 18th century uh, oratorio, and the librettos thereof. And I say, right, here's your charts, red pen, anything that doesn't work, let me know. And I was quite pleased, although I'm actually blowing my own trumpet, um, when she came back to me and said, there's about three or four words, otherwise you could have persuaded me it was an 18th century libretto. So that rather tells you how much time, sadly, I've spent in my life working uh, in 18th century music, and particularly, of course, I'm terribly familiar with the Handel oratorios. Haydn, when he performed this piece in Vienna, he often used really quite enormous orchestras, orchestras of really a Mahlerian size. So when we actually recorded this piece, I wanted to uh, recreate the type of ensemble he used, which had three different wind groups and as many as 10 horns in the Great Hunting uh, Horn Chorus. Um, and both the seasons and the creation were often given in Vienna uh, in these great performances uh, with these enormous forces. Now, I have to freely admit that in the beautiful parish church of, of Gestalt, we will not be using those sort of forces. Uh, simply because there would be no, no room for an audience. Um, so we will go back to this, a smaller scale performance, which, which Haydn himself also used. So it's possible to perform these pieces very much with general orchestra or with large symphonic orchestra. And for recording, it was certainly nice, quite rarely to experiment with the larger forces. Mm -hmm.